I'm sounding the alarm. Okay. There's a lot of misinformation uh, about health information, mis health information online, okay. on social media, and it can be dangerous. Okay, agreed. Agreed. It's everywhere. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm going to whisper today because I always talk too loud. What'd you say? <laughs> okay. I think that's because I'm hearing impaired in my yeah. left ear <laughs> now. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of misinformation. So I just want to talk about that. And then there is something that we can teach our viewers to use that can help them assess. Okay. So we're going to talk about why there's misinformation online. Yep. And how to assess if information that you're seeing online on social media is any good. And some of this actually applies to non-health stuff too. Like even like the news or people that are just sharing their opinions. There's yeah. a lot of misinformation on the internet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And now the problem with defining misinformation, it's a bit tricky, okay. okay? Because in order to define what is misinformation, you have to have a truth. Okay. And as you know, in medicine, we don't always have the right answer or the truth. Sometimes there's a few ways to look at something, a right. few ways to treat something, a few ways to diagnose something. Sure. So then how do you define what's misinformation and what's not? Right? I'm sure some cardiologists say what we say about statins. We can't find any evidence to show that statins make you live longer. Yeah, and two cardiologists would argue they, to the death potentially. Yeah, right? Yeah. So then they say, oh, we're spreading this information. Yes. But agree. we try and always back it up with some science and some literature and say, look, agree. there's different opinions here. Yeah. Okay, that's the, the first problem. We're okay. trying to tackle this problem. The second issue is the half-life of medical knowledge. Right. So we measure like radioactive decay and different things in half-life. How long does it take between, before half of everything that we know in medicine is wrong? I think, honestly, that really depends on the specific topic because sure. some things are more stable. Yes. Like, I would say, like blood pressure stuff is mostly stable, like right. the safe amount of blood pressure. But other stuff, yes, could be rapidly changing month to month, year to year. Well, we, when I was a med, stu med student, it was five years. They yeah. say, oh, half-life of medical knowledge is five years. Yeah. Now it's down to like two years or even in the order of months. Yeah, depending on what you're talking about. Okay, so, so that contributes to some misinformation online because stuff that once stuff gets online, often it stays there forever. Sure. And that's in our videos. If you look yeah. back at our videos from not that long ago, we say, oh, you stayed in the hospital for three or four or five days after True. your joint replacement. Yeah. And now we say you home the same day. day. So that means that stuff that we said before is wrong. Yes. All right. So having said all that, okay. There is a growing concern that a lot of stuff online is dangerous. Now, first of all, you might wonder well, how many people turn to social media or websites or the internet to get health information. I'd say a lot. The majority, I'd say. A lot. Here's a study that showed that 60% of Americans get their health information online. Like get all of their health information? No, but get a good Let's get some proportion. Okay, yeah, okay. sure. It makes and sense. actually, that's, globally, that's low. Canada's okay. higher. I'd say some parts of Europe are 70, 80 percent. I read that Saudi Arabia, 92 percent of the people turn to social okay. media or internet for health information. Hopefully they're watching our channel. Right. Yeah. So uh, in Canada, they did a survey yes. uh, to look, and they did this Canadian Medical Association does this annual survey to look at what's going on with health information, social media, and how people are consuming it. Okay. All right. And they made some interesting conclusions. Okay. Let's take a look here. So you can see that over the past year, Canadians' encounters with misinformation has increased significantly. Um, they found that the news media ecosystem remains highly fragmented by age, uh, and people are avoiding the news. Sure. Uh, those who rely heavily on social media for news are very vulnerable to getting exposed to misinformation. Yeah. And we're seeing a direct link between misinformation and negative health outcomes. Compared to last year, more Canadians are delaying medical treatment, straining their personal relationships, and even experiencing heightened anxiety due to false claims. And for me, that's the most concerning part. That is Right, concerning. is that people are getting hurt, essentially, by either doing something that they read online that's wrong, or not doing something because they're afraid. Right, and it's directly affecting their health. Yes. Right, that's a problem. Okay. And the good news is we're trying, current, there are some current efforts to try and mitigate this problem. The bad news is those efforts are not working. Right, and that was part of the impetus for our channel too, is put out, you know, reliable, exactly. safe, current information exactly. that's, well, we're gonna talk about all the things exactly. that make information good. All right, so let's, let's, let's if look at If there only it. was a test, if there only was a test that you could implement okay. to look at information online that could help you assess whether or not it's good information or bad information. There is. What? There is a good test, and it's actually been published over 20 years ago. Okay. Okay. Tell me it has a clever name. It has a clever acronym, C-R-A-A-P. 
It's called the crap test. The crap test. Okay, let's look at the elements of the crap test. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll go back and forth here. So it helps you to assess whether or not the study or the information you're receiving is BS. Okay, it comes from California. Okay. Published in 2004. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is the C. Okay. The crap. Okay. And that is the currency of the information. We talked about the half-life of medical knowledge. So you want to check that the information you're looking at online is current. Is it up to date? Yeah. Is that video five years old and you're talking about a rapidly evolving field of medicine? Yeah. And it's probably not true anymore. Right. So the currency. Well, and, that, and that's also why some are like, didn't you just do a video on this two or three years ago? Yes. Yes. And then usually we try to keep the, the bones of the previous video if it's still relevant and add any kind of new findings. Did you say bones because of orthopedic surgery? Yeah. Okay. okay, the R is the relevance. And so this is relevant in a, in a broad scale. So first of all, is the information even relevant to you? So if the video is made by a cardiologist, for other cardiologists on how to do their daily practice and you watch that video, it's probably not relevant to you, yeah, right? True. Or if it's specifically for healthcare people, if, unless you're a healthcare person, but if it's for you as a patient, you want to make sure that it's directed to patients in a, in a manner that not only is relevant, but also appropriate and a level that you can learn from it. Right. So is it, rel is it answering the question, you, the medical question you have? Are you the right audience for the video? Right. Not that you're not allowed to watch it, but whether it's useful or not. Is yeah. Question. Yeah. Okay. The A's, okay, now the two A's can be amalgamated into one A just so okay. it spells crap properly. Okay. Uh, but that is basically authority. Is the person giving you the medical information, do they have any authority in that field? Okay. Right? Or are they someone who is not in that field at all giving this information? And I would say in the influencer world, this is a current problem where oh, yeah. people are self declared authorities on stuff. Yeah. And then they just put the information on, no one even knows what their credentials are. Even. Yeah. Kind of like we are. <laughs> self-declared authorities on medical information online, yes. which we are not. But yeah. we are just going by the evidence that we've read and the things we've seen by people who've administered these surveys and that. Right. Uh, and this isn't, our, this isn't our publication, the crap test, but I right. think it's really good. Sure. The other part of the A is the um, accuracy. If you're making a claim, are you backing it with some evidence, Right. scientific evidence? Is it your opinion versus is it based on a study or yeah. based on uh, another group of people or whatever? Right. And we often say that. So this yeah. is my opinion. This is how I would do it. Right. But this is what the evidence says. And I think disclosure about that is part of the accuracy. Yeah. And it's okay. People are allowed to have opinions. Sure. They're allowed to share their opinions online. But just say that it's your opinion yeah. and not that it's a fact. Yeah. Because some people talk about their opinions like they're facts. Then that's a fact. That's, that's a fact. Okay. And the P is for purpose. So what is the purpose of the article or the video that you're watching? Is it to educate and to inform? Is it more altruistic? Or is it a commercial? Is it to sell like a, a video or a program or a book or a supplement or whatever? I think any information that is associated with some type of sale, you just have to proceed with caution. Not that it can't still be useful. It could still be useful, but you have to recognize it. I, and this is my favorite one. Because it's just bias, right? Right. My favorite one is purpose. Is it is it an advertisement? Yeah. Is it medical information or yeah. is it entertainment? Some sure. Of the stuff I've seen on TikTok, for example, how to get rid of a headache, putting a cloth on your head and inverted glass of water. Like, that's that. entertainment more right. so than actually any useful medical information. I think the other thing too in 2025 is that there are a lot of uh, views that are like anti-establishment. Yes. So you're just trying to grow your channel by being controversial. So I think be aware of that kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. The whole anti-establishment, especially from doctors who work in establishments. And right. now you're saying oh, I'm anti-establishment. Right. We couldn't be, we have to have an establishment because we're not going to replace your knee in our garage. We need we, the establishment. We need the establishment. Right. Sorry. And, and I think, unfortunately, the, the pandemic highlighted that. It was very divisive, and yeah. I think there are certain things within medicine that are controversial, and mm -hmm. we acknowledge that. And that, like you said before, sometimes there isn't a clear answer, and it's not that doctors are providing you with misinformation, just the information is not, it's not binary. It's not like this is the way it yeah. is. You know what I mean? I think it's a lot of nuance in medicine There is. There is a lot of debate, and there should be a lot of debate, and there's a lot, and a lot of times there's a different way to treat the same ailment. And sometimes what we thought was a good idea 20 years ago, we've learned that it's not a good idea. Yeah. And that's also, unfortunately, how we evolve as a society, as people, as medicine. That's it. Now yeah. you have a crap test, C-R-A-P or C-R-A-A-P, yeah. to test if the stuff you're watching online is C-R-A-P. Yeah, and if it doesn't meet all those criteria, doesn't mean you're not allowed to watch it. Just proceed with caution. That's it. Maybe just don't act upon something you see. Sure. Now, now you know. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, use this test to assess our channel as well. Yeah, use it on our videos. We sure. probably failed. Thank you. <laughs>
There you go. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.